today I wanted to talk about warming up and technique uh, exercises. So I've collected a few of those and I wanted to share with you some of the my favorite ones. Uh, but before I get into it, it should we should define what I'm kind of talking about here. So with technique exercises, I mean there's different aspects of why you want to practice technique. So the first reason I think is to uh, improve your physical ability to play your instrument. So imagine you're, think of a trumpet player. They have to constantly practice expanding their register, right? So there's a limit to how high they can play. And the only way to get better at that is to just practice uh, it's a very physical thing. We don't have that problem with guitar as far as register goes, but we can all relate to the limit in terms of speed, how fast we can play and how far we can stretch. Then there's the aspect of uh, warming up. So you might, might want to have a few little exercises to warm up with and then there's also the third aspect where you do certain exercises in order to improve your technique. So you want to make sure that you do them correctly. And in this case, imagine a golf player or a martial art, martial art uh, performer. You need to, there's a wrong way and a right way to do things. And you need to do certain drills or exercises to make sure that you uh, do it correctly and improve on your technique. So sometimes these exercises can overlap. They can be covering different aspects of uh, th at the same time. So let's just get started with a very simple exercise that I think a lot of you have seen. It's called a quasi-chromatic scale. Just getting the fingers going. So this could be for warming up or improving your speed. So just playing each finger on the lowest string and then continuing on the next string. Pretty straightforward, right? And then you could either move, you can you move one fret up and you could either do the reverse or go the same direction with the fingers. I prefer that. And of course you want to use a metronome when you do this, right? So, 16th notes. Instead of just mindlessly going through the motions here, you might want to figure out what you're doing. So you could be just be warming up, getting your fingers going, right? So they get warm. Um, or you could be trying to improve your speed. I've covered this in the previous lesson on how to improve your speed. Uh, so that you're kind of constantly pushing how fast you can do this exercise, right? So there could be that. It could also be uh, making sure that you're doing it properly so that you're not holding your, that your precision is good and that you're not moving your hand uh, too much, like small motions. You could either, and also not moving your hands away too much from the fretboard, but to try to get the fingers to stay as close as possible. even though there are some great guitar players that don't seem to do that at all. So, uh, What else? Well, it could also be just, you know, making sure you have good tone and long notes instead of... Even though it seems like a kind of a stupid exercise, it could be uh, used in many different ways. You could accent different notes. So 
you can be creative with a boring exercise. You might even prefer to just play a chromatic scale if you think this is too stupid. Same kind of idea, right? Uh, the idea is to get all the you fingers going. You want to make going. sure that you're alternating. Right. Then, of course, you could uh, change it around so you do the reverse. You could uh, come up with any kind of combination of your four fingers, right? So, one, three, two, four. Or the reverse. I personally find that kind of stuff a little bit redundant. It's kind of all the same. But what could happen is that if you list all those combinations of fingerings, you might find that, oh, I'm, there's, some of them are, you're not as good at. Then that would be the, the idea of improving your actual, finding your physical limitations and try to work on that. So there's a, there is merit to practicing that way, I guess, but uh, let's move on. The next exercise is from a great book. I don't have a copy here, but uh, it's one of my favorite books. It's a classical method book called Pumping Nylon. And the first time I saw this book, the cover, I, I just laughed, and I think a lot of people do, but it's actually a great book by this amazing guitar player named, his name is Scott Tennant, I think. And there's tons of exercises in this book. And I find that if you want to find good technique exercises for guitar, you want to look at the world of classical guitar or like heavy metal guitar players, like shredding guitar players, because that they kind of like to work on their technique, right? So this exercise is, I call it the spider. That's what I, the name that was given to me when I first was introduced to this. So uh, let me just go over the exercise here. So it's the, the middle two set of strings here. So I play this shape and then I play like a fifth, another fifth shape, and then a minor third shape. It's very important that each finger uh, stays on its fret. So the, the point of this exercise is not speed, it is to be able to, so I guess finger independence, you could call it, so that you can do one thing with one finger without uh, the other fingerings following, if you know what I mean. So you want to play long notes, and you play the note and let it ring as long as possible until you hit the next note. This finger should still be holding this note until it's time to release. So holding the notes as long as possible is the objective of this exercise. Then we could uh, do string skipping. book he goes even further but I think the point of the exercise is not to stretch too much it's to be able to let the notes ring so it's not see I'm letting go of the note too early there they should be holding they should be holding them as long as possible That's the point, and you want, might want to use the metronome just to make sure that your rhythm is even. Right, next okay. is uh, an exercise that I saw, what's his name, uh, John Petrucci, I think his name is. I'm not really into that kind of music, but he's a great guitar player with this band, Dream Theater, and obviously extremely technical player. So I can't remember where he showed me this, I mean, he didn't show it personally to me, but I saw it on some video or something. So it's 
kind of similar in the same, the idea is to let the notes ring as much as possible. So when I'm changing from the first part to the second, the outer strings should remain, right? And now when I'm switching the outer fingers, the, the middle, the inside fingers should stay, if you know what I mean. So it's also, a, the idea here is to be able to move some fingers while the other fingers stay so that they're not, so that they're independent of each other. And it's funny if you're a teacher, right, you show this to a student, yeah, then you see why this is important. Because they, most of the time they can't do it. Then you could go down because obviously it gets the frets gets wider as you go down the neck. So it's not important to do it fast. It's just uh, do it even and with good tone, relaxed. So the same thing here, what we're doing is falls under the category of trying to improve our physical ability, which means that we're trying to make our fingers obey uh, better. Uh, so it's not speed, it's not, it could be warming up too. It could also be stretching because in this video of John Petrucci's video, he he does it with stretching, and I don't really recommend that. I think it's a little bit too... You might want to, don't want to, I mean, shouldn't hurt yourself. Uh, and also, we're playing different kinds of guitars, right? If you have a that kind of guitars that he plays, I think it's a little bit easier than on a, something like this, right? So, it's a different style of music. Mm, but obviously, you could do it on different sets of strings, too. This is the kind of exercise that once you've ma mastered it, you can let it go and move on. So some people might think that, oh, if I do this kind of stuff 10 hours a day, I'm going to become amazing. It doesn't work like that. It's quality over quantity when it comes to this stuff. You want to make sure that you do it consistently a little bit every day and that you do it correctly. So it might, if you have no idea what you're doing, you might want to get an instructor making sure that you do it properly. Uh, the kind of stuff that we go through where we practice like 10 hours a day, those, you know, and you, some people when they go to music college or something, that's when you really practice and you put in the hours. That's when you're learning the scales in every key and, you know, and that kind of stuff or transcribing solos 10 hours a day uh, this kind of stuff you definitely don't want to do it 10 hours a day <laughs> so you might think well if i do it all day i'm gonna be like ingwe malmsteen or something that it doesn't work like that I, in my experience uh okay so uh, i digress next one is also from uh, Mm, the pumping nylon book it's the what he calls a fixed finger exercise meaning that we have two fingers fixed on uh, the fretboard so we put the third finger on D and uh, the fourth finger on E flat that's the first uh, example and they're gonna stay there and then we're gonna, so that's why I put them in brackets there. And the, then we play the other two notes, G, A flat, E, F. Sorry. Also try to play long notes. 
mm. and try not to tense those fingers. They should be holding the notes but relaxed. And then you try to come up with other combinations of that, right? So you do the reverse. I put these two fingers fixed. Most people, if you have never done this, this would probably be awkward at first. So that would be an example of where you find a physical limitation that you want to work on. So again, you don't want to do it for an hour. You just do it a little bit every day until it gradually becomes a little bit easier. Let's do the middle two fingers. So we put the, the fixed fingers on fifth and eighth fret. I think in the book he goes... And uh, I think he even goes to the... But again, you don't want to hurt yourself, so be careful with that kind of stuff. And then you might want to do the first and the third finger fixed. And again, here's you want to observe where your problem areas are. It could be different from everybody, uh, from person to person. So that's what you want to focus on. Like, oh, I've, this finger is awkward. Well, you want to work on that. Obviously the pinky, if you never use that, it's going to be the problem finger, probably. Moving on, uh, this next one, the last one is something I saw in uh, Steve Vai's famous or infamous 12-hour uh, workout that was published in the Guitar Player magazine, I think. I think you can find this online. It's the 12-hour workout by Steve Vai. And there's, again, this idea that, oh, if I do this 12 hours a day, I'm going to sound like Steve Vai. Uh, maybe not. So um, here we're playing kind of uh, this way instead of this way just like we did before it's good to play more uh, vertically I guess so imagine that you have this shape imagine that I'm continuing even though there's I'm run out, I ran out of strings you'll see the logic once you do the exercise it's like I'm moving the finger, the shape, even though I'm running out of strings. If I had two imaginary strings here, that's where my fingers would be. And then the last would be here, right? So imagine it's moving across. So if I play it, it sounds like... Then I do the what's called a retrograde, a retrograde, I guess. I do it backwards. I'm not sure that's a retrograde, actually. I shouldn't say that. Ah. So that was pretty terrible, I noticed. I haven't done this one in ages, so maybe I should pick up this exercise again. Uh, a fret higher. So you want to use a metronome for this, right? Again, it's not really it's about speed, it's about... Uh, it's challenging in many different ways. The picking is really tricky. I think he recommends, Steve Vai recommends doing uh, sweet picking or economy picking. I do alternate picking. It's not his exercise. I've seen it before somewhere else too, so. 
So uh, you do the whole, the whole uh, neck, and then you could do the. There are combinations of doing it the reversed way instead of this shape. You could that shape. This could be uh, warming up. It's also improving your technique, right? Your ability to skip strings really quickly and synchronizing. That was something I didn't talk about. Synchronization between your picking hand and this hand. And uh, then there's all, all these other aspects uh, that I didn't cover in this lesson about technique, like legato playing, especially is a chapter in and of itself, I think. So that might be for a future lesson. But that was it for today. I shall see you next time.